Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vongani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode, we have the first edition of the Motherland Comedy Festival in Maryland, Ugandan vocalist Irene Tali, and an original animated series from Africa has made its debut on Netflix. Let's get on with the show. And let's start with some highlights of the latest entertainment news from around the world. In film news, movie stars and celebrities, including actor Mila Jovovich and artists Rita Ora and Leona Lewis, turned up at the rosy carpet of the Amfa Gala to attend a fundraiser for AIDS research at the medieval building of Scuola Grande de la Misericordia in Venice. The goal of the luxury evening was to raise money on behalf of Amfa. The Foundation for AIDS Research, which supports HIV prevention, treatment, education, and advocacy. And elsewhere, British actor and musician Idris Elba and his wife, Sabrina Dore Elba, visited Rwanda for the second time and participated in a traditional gorilla naming ceremony known as Quita Izina. The couple named a baby gorilla Narame, which means long life in Kenya Rwanda, the official language of Rwanda. They also met with President Paul Kagame and discussed the role of creative arts in Africa's development. And in other news, thousands of Burning Man attendees parted hard on Sunday despite downpours that turned the Nevada desert, where the annual arts and music festival takes place, into a sea of sticky mud and led officials to order the multitudes to shelter in place. When the rain came down, we all just kind of went back to our tents and hung out with each other and waited until it stopped. It was incredibly muddy. We had to, a lot of us, put bags over our shoes or tape them over our feet. Um, everyone seems to be in fairly good spirits. I'm sure that there's other stories besides mine uh, that are not so great, but I think in general, the, the sense is that people help each other out. People, you know, uh, help each other with housing, with food. Uh, supplies so I think there's a general sense that you know this is going to end very soon um, and the gates will open and we'll all be on our way home one person had died at the event in the Black Rock Desert authorities said and let's get to some film news an original animated series from Africa has made its debut on the Netflix streaming platform the series, dubbed Super Team 4, was written by a young Zambian and takes place in a futuristic version of Zambia's capital, Lusaka. Kathy Short reports from Lusaka. Here is more. Four teenage girls who happen to be superheroes on a mission to save the world. That is the plot of the African animated series Super Team 4, now streaming on Netflix. Zambian writer and creator Malenga Mlendema told VOA that she loved watching cartoons as a child but never saw herself represented in any way. She says that with Super Team 4, she gets to see Africa, African characters and Zambia's capital Lusaka on the screen. So using, you know, these fun, relatable characters, we tell stories that are full of action, uh, lots of humor, some silliness, but lots of heart. Melendema enjoyed the collaboration that went into making an animated series. Wait, you I can't wait to buy them. I'm going to be <sighs> It was fun to know that we could move forward and, and incredible artists from around the world could come on board and then you know, just put everything together that we now see uh, streaming on Netflix now. Zambian voice actor Zoan Guira portrays K Bongo, a teenage superhero who is passionate about science and education. For me, my, my experience was, um, I think it was a mixture. It was a mixture of exciting, I was a bit nervous, you know, but, but most of all, I learned a lot from the experience. Many film animators in Zambia are self-taught, but lack a technical support, says Akende Muyumbana. Despite the challenges, Akende Muyumbana, creative director at Utopia Studios in Lusaka, has persevered. I think Super Team 4 had one of the best um, releases for animation in Africa because genuinely there is a disparage between Africa and animation, with art, in fact, as a general whole but they really did open a door for animation. 
South Africa's Triggerfish Studios, which produced Super Team 4, is set to release other animation shows this year on the Netflix, Disney, and Showmax Entertainment platforms. Triggerfish creative director Anthony Silverstone told VOA that 2023 has been a great year for African animation. The, the medium of animation actually could employ so many different people across the, you know, the range from concept artists, writers, to lighting artists, to production people, to finance people. Um, but then the other part, which is the kind of side that excites me, is just the fact that people actually get to see more African stories and more African people and more cultures from the, the diverse continent that we actually are. Industry experts like Silverstone say that production of animated films and television is on the rise in Africa and that talent is also in abundance. All that remains is for opportunities to open up for the continent's animators. Kathy Short for VOA News, Lusaka. And now to some music news. Ugandan vocalist Irene Tali is an award-winning singer, songwriter, and guitarist known for her unique musical styles, thusing vocals, and evocative lyrics. She tells me that she's currently in studio working on her new album with the release date somewhere in 2024. Let's take a look. Irene Ntale is no doubt one of the top artists in Uganda's vibrant music industry. She says that Uganda's musical landscape is ever-changing, with new artists reflecting a diversity of musical genres, including traditional folk music, reggae, dancehall, hip-hop, afrobeat, and many others. People should know that right now, there's so much talent that's coming out of Kampala and Uganda as a whole. You know, back in the day, we used to just have a few, you know, household names. Yeah. But now the talent is crazy. There are so many amazing young people that are coming up who play instruments, who know how to rap. And the thing with our industry, there is no limits. Like we don't have, we're not limited to one particular sound. So anything is possible. It's a very diverse yeah. sound. Yes. How would you characterize your music? Um, I think it's versatile good music. Versatile good music. Yes. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> yeah. Because I love I'll it. give you R and B, then yeah. I'll give you Afrobeat, then I'll give you some reggae. Like whatever whatever the vibe is and it's right. Yeah. In studio, that's what I'll give you. Love you. Um, I'm currently in studio, you know, I'm recording, I've recorded a lot of singles, which I'm thinking, I'm still trying to figure out with my team, should mm. we release an album, should we just release like a six-piece EP, should we continue to just release like singles and videos, so we are still trying to figure that out, me and my team. Even though Uganda's music industry has experienced significant growth and transformation over the years, she has managed to stay on top by sticking to her musical path. Um, for me mainly, I believe being, first of all, accepting who I am and the kind of talent that I have, you know, just accepting that they can only just be one Irene Tale and mm. that is the flavor that I can bring, mm. my own flavor. Mm. What's the song that finally established Irene Tale as a household name in the Uganda music industry? Mm. That song has to be Joe Veda, Jen Veda. It, I believe that song changed my life. Yeah. Can yeah. you sing us a couple of lines of that, the, the, the <laughs> chorus? Okay. Sabeka tonde la chikose na kuleta leno kufunye o wapoda poda mutagende to tambule o wampe ke mera jembera na kanamba konkarina jembera jembera manyana kateko. From an ABBA legend teaming up with artificial intelligence to a tech startup that wants to get into the boxing ring, these are the week's big stories from the AI revolution. Here is more. From software that really sings to why chatbots are throwing some punches, this is Generation AI. YouTube is launching an incubator to help explore the use of AI in music. The Alphabet Unit says the group will help gather insights on generative AI experiments at YouTube. The firm has signed up mega-label Universal Music as a partner, and is set to work with artists including ABBA member Bjorn Oveas. 
Facebook parent Meta has released an AI model that can translate between dozens of languages. Boss Mark Zuckerberg hopes that will help drive his vision of a global metaverse where people everywhere can interact without linguistic divides. Baidu is waiting for a green light from Beijing. The Chinese tech giant beat earnings forecasts over the latest quarter and says it's integrating its Ernie chatbot into numerous products. But it needs regulators to okay a wider rollout to the public, and that hasn't come yet. AI could be entering the boxing ring. Startup Jabber has developed a system that can observe fights and measure 50 different parameters in real time. Boss Alan Swicetroop. And what it's going to give you is an automated count of strikes thrown, uh, what's landed, the impact quality of the shots. But it's also going to do a lot of other cool things like generate automated highlights for you. The system has already been put through its paces at a London boxing club. And AI-generated art cannot be copyrighted. That's according to a U.S. court, at least. The ruling says only humans can get the legal protection, to the disappointment of artistic chatbots everywhere. In Bowie, Maryland, a diverse comedy festival celebrated the talent and culture of African comedians. The Motherland Comedy Festival, organized by CY, a Nigerian comedian, featured some comedians from Africa and the diaspora who shared their jokes, stories, and music with the audience. BOS Kali Abdu has this story. The Motherland Comedy Festival took place at the Bowie Center for the Performing Arts on Sunday. We are Africans. We love you. We love you too. Who are you? <laughs> the evening featured African and diaspora comedians who amused the audience with jokes and storytelling. CY, a comedian and entrepreneur, established a festival to highlight the diversity and creativity of African comedy. The first edition of the Motherland Comedy Festival and um, people turn up in their numbers to experience, you know, comedy from the motherland. On a night that also featured local merchants selling a range of things, the comedy festival brought together members of the African diaspora to exchange laughs and conviviality. The Motherland Comedy Festival was sponsored by Fincer Pro, a firm that provides financial services for individuals and businesses. Ayomide Ibrahim, Fincer Pro CEO, said he was proud to support the event and promote African culture. As a business owner, I understand that I need to jump on projects like this, you know, because it's the best driver, you know, uh, to project what FinSaf Pro is about. The festival featured comedians from different countries and backgrounds, such as Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and more. You know, this is a festival that features all the best comics from different parts of Africa. You know, and it's been going on so far. I happen to be fortunate, I'm fortunate enough to be one of the comedians who was featured tonight. And it was an amazing experience. I think African comedy, like everything else African associated, just needs the exposure. You know, like you said, you're naming guys, the top guys, Trevor Noah, Michael Blackson. These are guys who are doing it for years, right? They're consistent, they're on the big name platforms, they're on the big news platforms. So for us, it's just about how can we get the same exposure for other upcoming comedians, right? How can they help us? How can we help ourselves? How do we push ourselves forward? So I think we're coming up. We just have to maintain the consistency. And um, like I said, just bring the jokes and, it, you know, I think we'll make it. The Motherland Comedy Festival was a testament to the power of comedy to bridge gaps and celebrate diversity. The worst part about a joke is stop flushing at a certain point. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Fungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at DOAAfrica.com. We are also on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>